Wednesday through Thursday. We're now joined by Baylor men's basketball coach, national championship head coach Scott Drew with Craig and Paul, David Smoke as well. So what have you been up to? <laughs> Not much. Relaxing, vacation, a lot of fishing, golf, right? <laughs> yeah, the, no, no decision making, no recruiting, none of that. Uh, can you try to describe, and I know it's been a while, but just the decision about Kentucky, if you don't mind, and how much maybe a relief off your shoulders, no matter what you would have done, and how much did that, what did that feel like? Well, it, first, it's a, uh, um, a great compliment anytime uh, uh, people appreciate what you've done, and that's uh, uh, not just from Kentucky, but from uh, uh, Baylor. Um, and uh, as you know, in, in any big decision in life, and why is it a big decision? Um, because it, at the end of the day, uh, I've really grown for 20-plus years spiritually, and uh it, Waco is home. Uh, it's home to my family. Uh, my kids were all born here. And uh, uh, the easy thing always to do is to stay uh, because that's what you want to do. Uh, at the same time, uh, whatever God wants you to do, that's what you what you what you need to do and what you're called to do. And um, really, in that whole process, that's what I was just trying to do was uh, see his will and uh, uh, where he wanted uh, our family and um, the good thing is he wanted us at Baylor. So uh, uh, once once that was uh, done and solved and added, it was very easy because, uh, again, this is home and uh, uh, we're very comfortable. We feel loved here, supported here. But the great thing also was people knew, hey, if God's calling you to go, that you, you got to go where God wants you to go. Well, Coach, I'm glad I didn't have to send you my last-ditch effort to convince you not to leave because uh, <laughs> I would miss you too much. But I was going to say, moving really stays stinks it's a pain uh, <laughs> uh you know there's not as good mexican food up there as you as you know <laughs> I, you know there's lots of things uh, i was gonna send but uh you have been able to you know in in all of that you know still be able to do your actual job at baylor when people are calling you to see if they're if you're interested and all of that mm -hmm. and you've had a very productive off season how much of the excitement around your name uh, and people wanting you other places has kind of helped uh, open up some doors that uh, maybe wouldn't have been open before for recruiting. Well, I think, uh, 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 our staff deserves, uh, most of the credit with that. And they've done a phenomenal job and we've had a lot of staff movement this year. Um, but those guys that, that had stayed and the ones before they had left had really put us in a good position to be successful. And then, uh, uh Mac and President Linda, uh, Livingstone, what they've done with, uh, making sure Baylor University and the uh, current climate of NIL and transfer portal uh, is able to be successful and compete for championships. Uh, that's extremely important. And then you throw in uh, uh, Baylor's success. I mean, last five years, winning, winning his power five program in the country. Uh, in the last four years, the only team to be a top three seed uh, in the NCAA tournament. Uh, and since 2019, one of four schools to win a game or more in the NCAA tournament. The only school to have three guys drafted in the top 16 in the last three drafts. So, so much uh, uh, positive uh, uh, things to build off of and to attract recruits to. And then, uh, is, is, you know, anytime that uh, people are talking highly about you in the news, uh, that's a good thing. And uh, a lot of a lot of excitement around uh, Baylor University. And then uh, with uh, uh, Eve, Kobe, Jay. Jalen, all uh, possibly drafted this year and a couple possibly in the lottery. That's that's all uh, things that have really made it easier to recruit uh, the next players at Baylor University. Coach, you mentioned that that coaching tree, and, and it's flourishing right now, and, and two big moves mm -hmm. this offseason, obviously, with John Jacobs uh, taking over at Florida Atlantic. And then after your Kentucky saga, Kentucky still mm -hmm. strikes here in Waco with Alvin Brooks mm -hmm. III, obviously, bringing him onto to uh, Mark Pope's staff. You're no stranger to turnover on staff, but can you just speak to uh, the impact of both of those men and, and now how you've gone about filling those roles as it was announced last week? 
Yeah, so uh, uh, Coach Coach Jake has uh, uh, has done a phenomenal job ever since uh, uh, he got here, and uh, really uh, did a great job in uh, uh, helping things uh, offensively, in particular, and uh, worked with the guards a lot. And recruiting wise, uh, really did a great job identifying not only talented players but people that fit our culture. Uh, so uh, really excited for him. Uh, uh, FAU got a, a, a great coach and uh, somebody that's going to be really, really successful. Uh, Coach Brooks is uh, somebody that uh, uh, from day one uh, – you always respected his work ethic. You respected uh, respected how he did it, and somebody that's been selective. Uh, he's had head coaching uh, inquiries uh, and has turned down some of those opportunities and not pursued some of them, waiting for what's best for him and his family. So there's no doubt that uh, 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 very soon in the near future he's going to uh, be given several more of these opportunities, and hopefully it's one that fits him and his family because he'll be a great head coach. He's done a great job with us here and, and somebody that uh, has no enemies in the profession everybody really respects him so gonna miss those guys uh, uh luke simon did a phenomenal job as director uh of ops for us and uh, i know you guys that uh, uh have spent any time traveling with us or around us mm -hmm. know uh, what a great job he did and uh, he he was able to get a great promotion at ohio state uh to be an on the floor coach with uh jake deber somebody that played uh with my dad and brother Brother and coach with my brother and a ton of respect for um so uh all, all three of those guys uh, uh really excited and happy for for them all right i i'm gonna i'm gonna name two schools and if you can talk about these players let me know because i know not everyone has signed <laughs> uh miami and duke yep what about them all right <laughs> <laughs> norshad omir uh, uh an incredibly good looking uh athlete who's placed yeah. inside and uh, tremendous hands around the rim, but Jeremy yeah. Roach, the guard from Duke as well. How big, yeah. and they aren't the only ones, but how big are those two dudes coming into part of your roster? Well, I think uh, uh, since you brought up uh, Norchad first, somebody that uh, uh, fits our culture, um, somebody exemplifies a culture, joy, Jesus, others, yourself, somebody that's been to a Final Four his sophomore year at Miami. Uh, he's had success. Uh, I joked uh, uh, the day he was born, he averaged a double-double. So um, somebody that's uh, uh, produced at every level he's been uh, and a great teammate. Uh, everybody that knows him, uh, so appreciative for him, the person. Person, the man, he's going to be a great fit, uh, and, and the people in the community are going to really enjoy getting to know him. Uh, at the same time, uh, uh, Jeremy Roach is somebody that's been to a Final Four as well, somebody that we've played against and seen up close and personal this year. Uh, tremendous player who, uh, when the game's on the line or the bigger the moment, the better he performs. So uh, we know how important guard play is uh, in college basketball, so you, you bring in uh, – uh, two people that have experienced uh, success at the highest level, yet neither have won a national championship. So they're hungry to uh, have that opportunity and really fit in well with, uh, again, our culture and what Baylor University is about. Couldn't be uh, any more pleased to have uh, Jeremy and Norchett a part of our program. Particularly for Jeremy and the young guards you have coming in, not to mention Norchad, but I mean, for him as a guy who is a, I mean, you just watch him at Duke. I mean, he's a leader in every sense of the word. For those young guys you have coming in, how, how great of a pairing opportunity is that? Well, you, you, you definitely want to have a upperclassmen that uh, not only are talented and, and good players, but more importantly are good leaders and good teammates because uh, – it, coaches know this players listen to players more than they listen to coaches and if you get the right player led team and the right uh, uh, player leaders that's when your teams achieve the most so both of those guys uh, uh, are going to be great leaders great teammates and that's going to make it a lot easier um, for all the younger guys and new guys on our team Scott uh, we've asked you this before but is is the uh Part of building a roster more difficult than ever before with the transfer portal, with the way it is? Yeah. Well, I think it, uh, yes, to answer the question. Um, but uh, I think uh, a couple things. One, this year the recruiting calendar is a little easier, so that makes it um, easier to handle. The second thing is now that we've seen how things 
or, or, or trending and going through the experience last year for everybody, I think uh, it makes it a little easier uh, to go through. At the same time, uh, replacing uh, over half your team uh, is not something that uh, uh, any of us uh, are used to. We're used to players coming in, being here a couple years, graduating. Yes, you'll have a, a, a couple one and dones or people leave early or people transfer, but 75% uh, of your 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 team, uh, if, if you have a good culture, stay in three years, four years, five years, years and graduating. So uh, again, replacing that many guys in a short period of time, because really you don't know who's going pro, who's transferring, uh, who's coming back until season ends. And then you have that uh, uh, six, eight week window to not only figure that out, but then add people. And it used to be you'd recruit guys for two, three years, four years. So you knew them uh, and you knew uh, uh, just how they would fit in. Now you have to make those decisions a lot quicker. So not only are you watching a lot of film and talking to a lot of people, but then you got to try to uh, see how the guys you're recruiting, what your current team thinks of them and uh, if they would want to play with them. So it's just a, a, a lot more work at the end of the season it, over what it used to be, which is the end of the season, you might add one or two, but you're not adding six, seven, eight guys. Scott, I know this is probably not something you have to deal with, but how in the world, is, how difficult is it to keep up with making sure these student athletes, as they transfer as many times as they do, are continuing the path towards a degree? And making sure, is that is that something that, I know compliance, Chad Jackson, whatever, yeah. how difficult, is that even something you have to deal with? Oh, you definitely have to deal with it. And uh, uh, we're really blessed. Uh, uh, the people in academics have done a phenomenal job for us. Uh, Josh, Ramon, uh, Compliance, Chad, Mabry, Lauren, their group, and uh, uh, specifically uh, 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 Lauren and Josh, I think I, I talk to them as much as anybody on our staff. So uh, uh, they've done a phenomenal job in uh, not only identifying who we can recruit, but then once we're recruiting them, how we can make sure they're eligible, graduating, working on a master's degree, picking the right degrees, uh, and that's that's extremely critical so uh, couldn't thank them enough Scott uh, is this the first time since maybe you got here that you've had this much of a staff refresh hmm. in total I definitely think so uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I might have to get down into uh, uh, Matt's in here he can figure out if there is uh, was another another time but but uh, to recent history, by far and away, it's the most uh, turnover we've had. And uh, that's why, uh, uh, I mean, Tweedy Carter, Jared Nunes, Ty Beard, um, uh, Jason Smith, those guys did yeoman's work uh, through the transition as people were coming, going, going through the interview process, because not only were you doing that, but you had to put together a roster. So uh, those guys really did a great job stepping up and making all this possible. Are you glad that Coach Jacobs didn't take a Big 12 job? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is one thing for sure I was glad about. <laughs> Coach uh, and, 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 and ironically, Coach Jacobs uh, uh, said – uh, once he got the job, and you know, I didn't take a Big 12 job. I said, thank you, Coach. <laughs> <laughs> very true, very true. Coach, you don't strike me as the type that goes out seeking attention, but you also don't shy away from it when you do get it. You see the benefits in it. Um, obviously, I think it'd be beneficial for you guys that you had so much attention on, attention on you with uh, Louisville or Kentucky, whoever, whoever it's been showing you attention, but just... Personally, what was that process like to have such a huge spotlight on you there for two, three, four days, tracking flights, all the stuff that went into that? Just uh, on your end, was that was that a unique process, or, or just how did you kind of view all of that as you sorted through it? Well, I, I'm somebody that, like, I can't go to bed until my text messages are read, my emails are caught up, my WhatsApp and all that. So, uh, yeah, anything like that. Uh, I remember when we won the national championship, uh, it, there was over 
thousand text messages and you kept trying to answer them and you get it down to 600 and then you take a break, go to the bathroom and you come back and said 800, a thousand, you're like, <laughs> man, I'm never going to get this done, you know? But uh, <laughs> yeah. anyway, stayed up all night, knocked it out. So I say all that to say that was actually a uh, 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 good practice to go through what I went through in that uh, short period of time, because not only are you trying to uh, uh, get uh, resolution there and what God wants for you and your family, but also um, making sure that you're there for your current players and uh, addressing their needs and being the head coach they, they've they asked you to be and uh, entrusted you with. And at the same time, uh, dealing with recruiting on who we're recruiting, who we're bringing in, what we're looking for, what our needs are. So, uh not a lot of sleep uh during that during that period of time uh but again uh, uh couldn't be more blessed and pleased to have not only great family and friends and loved ones to support you and help you uh but also a, a staff to uh help make it where uh at the end of the day uh we've won titles we've won championships and uh our staff knows that uh each and every year you're not going to win the last game but having a chance to do that is really exciting uh and then doing it with a group of guys that you really enjoy being with and um we were able to put that together last year uh, and, and this year seems to be the same which is really exciting you mentioned your faith in the decision making was there one other uh, single piece of advice that maybe stood out to you more than anything else that anyone said to you uh -huh. Uh, a, a lot of great advice and uh, uh, actually stuff that uh, uh, once once that was over, talking to a couple of our players, uh, just deciding what to do. And uh, uh, I remember Caleb Boner sitting in my office. Well, how'd you do it? <laughs> <laughs> And, and so anyway, just having uh, the opportunity to share with uh, uh, spiritually seeking what God's will was and uh, then what's the best for my family. And then from there, um, trying to uh, discern that, and make the best uh, decision for that. Final thing, uh, you mentioned your staff. I know that Jared Nunes stayed. He's a part of it, a very big part of it, along with some others that were a part of your staff. But how much did he, being around during the time when others are leaving, I, I texted him the other day and he said, I'm trying to get on vacation. Does he, get, <laughs> does, does he now get a chance to take a vacation yet? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we're probably a week away from talking vacation time still. <laughs> but but uh, got to get the uh, NBA combine over with. He he definitely has earned a, a good night's sleep. That is for sure. And one one of the best things is, I mean, Jared. I've known him since nineteen ninety seven. I mean, we go to the Sweet 16 in 1998, but uh, you've known him for close to 30 years. So it's important uh, to have uh, people around that you know, trust, and, and love, but also people that know you. And a lot of times remind uh, me of certain things like, hey, this is how we did it before. Remember that work, Coach? And and uh, just knowing what uh, – having such a good feel for our, our current players and then uh, – knowing the ones coming in who would fit in with them uh, really, really did a, a, a great, great job um, during this time for sure. Well, now you can sleep because the Big 12 next year won't be more loaded than they've been the last several years, right? Only <laughs> good Lord, what's going on, man? It's going to be unbelievably fun to watch. <laughs> yeah, you know, every year I seem like a broken record. I'm like, the Big 12 is the best conference, and I didn't think it could get any better, and look what it is now. So, I, I but again, I, you look at a lot of these way too early polls, and for the top five teams or Big 12 teams or whatnot, and uh, it, it's going to be another exciting year. And uh, I know fans love it. Uh, we'll be done with the foster everything. I know uh, we played games in there, but it'll be so nice at the end of summer to move in there, have the practice facility and everything up and going. And uh, uh, that's such a big home court advantage for us, as we all know, last year. And really excited to have a full season in there. Thank you for your time. We appreciate it. Scott Drew. Baylor's national championship head coach with his men's basketball on many things. He was had a media session right before he joined us today here on 365 Sports. Yeah, it was that was that was good stuff as usual from Coach Drew. I'm I'm um, this is this is going to be a very interesting roster. It's going to be a very interesting Big Twelve. Um, they are going to beat up on each other like really really badly, and it's going to be it's going to be tense to watch 
every night, even if you're watching two teams, you don't really have a dog in the hunt. That game's probably going to be really good to watch. It's they need they need to win games better. They need to win more games that first weekend, though. Don't mm-hmm. they in the tournament? Yeah, they do. And by, like I don't. Sometimes I don't think that's indicative of a conference as a whole. I just think that I mean everything in the tournament is so. You know, this is who the committee puts you against. And sometimes it's like, well, this is the one kind of team that we can't play in the first no, they're weekend. they're good about the matchup. You can't do that, about that, you know, because it's going to be good. You know, you didn't um, – you know, if you're a team that doesn't shoot a lot of threes and then you play a team that might be, you know, you be a 4-13 and the team that, you know, you're playing at the 13, that's all they do is shoot threes. So if they get hot, you can't really match it. So it's it's a bad matchup and you lose, but does that mean your conference was bad and you weren't as good? No, well, it just means that they, you, they, you you drew the short end of the, the matchup stick. But they still need to make – they need to get into the second weekend more teams yeah. than they did. No, you're right. True. Overall, playing 20 league games – and having a bunch of teams. But we, we remember the story, Craig, last year at the end of the year when Clemson's head coach made a comment that he goes and beats Baylor about, you know, the RPI, whatever. It's a hell of a conference. It should be interesting to see how they do starting next year. With